Welcome everybody back to Friar Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Kim Ang, who was just, uh, I don't know if she was technically fired. I think they just kind of decided to agree to leave, um, but she just left as the GM of the Miami Marlins. Um, now we're looking at it. Padres have potentially been open to bringing in a GM under AJ Preller, um, kind of moving him to be the president of baseball operations and just having it kind of work that way. Um, it's an interesting discussion to have. So we wanted to talk about it. Uh, we, we talked about it maybe like two weeks ago, just the idea that they should and why we think that they should bring in a general manager. And um, honestly, Kim Ang is a really good candidate. Um, she is someone that just worked with the Miami Marlins this year. As we know, they made the playoffs over the Padres. And not only that, but they were a team that had their stars not really do too much. Um, Jazz Chisholm, Sandy Alcantara, they didn't have great years. And they still were able to make the playoffs. Um, they traded for Luis Arias, um, and they traded. They, they they moved good like good assets. So overall, I mean, just her like ability to work with not a ton was really promising this last year. So we're going to talk about potentially bringing her in as GM. Isaac, what do you think? Do you like the idea? What are your kind of thoughts overall on Kim Ang? Yeah, I mean, we could talk about her history real quick, right? And I know you asked what my thoughts were. I'll get into it later, but. Um, Let's talk about her history real quick. She has history uh, in the front offices of the Chicago White Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and New York Yankees. She's been involved with all three of those organizations, whether it be as an assistant GM or whatever role she was in. So lots of upside there in terms of, hey, she's worked in two of the biggest front offices in all of baseball in the Dodgers and the Yankees. And she's also worked in some smaller offices, some like smaller organization offices, such as the Chicago White Sox and most recently the Miami Marlins. And... Let's discuss how it's not easy being in her position. The first female general manager in all of baseball history. It's not easy being in that position because everyone probably expected her to fail. Is that reasonable to say? And she succeeded. She succeeded. She got in her second year, and I understand, you know, the, her record as the Marlins GM isn't that great, but in her second year or third year as the Marlins GM, here she is in, in the playoffs with guys that underperformed and – I understand they didn't win a game, I think, but the, the moves she made, she traded Pablo Araya, Pablo Lopez for Luis Arias. Win-win trade. The The Twins got an ace, and the Marlins got one of the best hitting seasons in terms of average ever. And that's a great trade. Then she got Josh Bell. She got Jorge Soler. She got multiple guys that ended up helping them make the playoffs. So I thought it was a it was a great run for her, and she want she didn't want to be promoted. I think they were asking her to be the president of baseball operations or something. She didn't want that. So, is it? it it's hard for me to envision the Padres saying, "Well, look, AJ, like you're not going to be manager anymore." As much as I want it to happen, it's hard for me to envision it. They should do it because AJ Preller has proven that it's not the role for him. It's not the thing that he should be doing. He should be just sticking to being the president of baseball operations, going to scout other players, do what you're best at, get people that are good at what they're assigned. AJ Pillar shown he's not good at what he's been assigned. As far as general manager goes, the general manager role in terms of the president of baseball operations role, he's been solid scouting, gotten us multiple top prospects about to get another top prospect and turn in a, in DeVries. So, He's been great at building up the farm, but he's not been great at building a successful major league team outside of one year. So get someone that just did it with less is going to be able to work with more. I mean, it's a dream role for anyone who can come in and for at least a year have Fernando Tatis Jr., Juan Soto, um, Xander Bogarts, and Manny Machado all in their prime. And you Darvish, if he's healthy, and Joe Musgrove, if if he's healthy, and you know a, a roster full of guys that are pretty good, Haseon Kim, hopefully Jake Cronenworth can bounce back. It's a really good role. It's also a role for someone who can work with less because, as we know, the Padres don't have a lot of money to spend, apparently. That's what we're being told, is the Padres don't have a lot of money to spend. Well, she just came from an organization that I don't know how much money they spent, but historically they don't spend a lot of money. They don't have a large fan base. They don't get a lot of money because they don't have a large fan base. No one shows up to their games. Um, so she's been able to show that she's able to get make depth moves that end up helping the team. So I think this would be a great hire. Um, I just know there's going to be people reluctant because she doesn't have a lot of history in the role. 
or experience in the role. But I mean, one year, one year removed from a playoff appearance with a team that definitely was not supposed to make the playoffs. So um, a lot of props to her. And I think she'd be a great candidate for this role. And she would be. I mean, she even interviewed for it, I believe. Before we hired AJ Peller, she was being interviewed along with a few other options. I think she was amongst the finalists. And even then, she has had plenty of time being an assistant GM for some of the top dogs in baseball early up throughout her career. I mean, she has the resume behind it. We just saw her have a really successful season with the Marlins with a few underperforming superstars. I mean... Imagine what she could do with our roster and being put in charge. Um, that's if, you know, the saying goes that Preller doesn't micromanage her. I think that's like the one concern that we still all have is that even though Preller may just be the president of baseball operations, it's kind of going to be like, hey, what he says goes and what he doesn't say doesn't go. I mean, it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, we can – sign a new GM, but do they have full control over it? Which I hope if we do go this route that she does, she's shown that she knows how to construct the roster really well. I mean, look at the Marlins. They didn't spend the most money and we don't have the most money to spend, but she built a roster that was capable of getting to the postseason. And we have a much more, uh, much larger talent pool than the Marlins do. So I think, I'm all for it. I was all for it when she was originally getting interviewed back in, what was it, 2014, 2015, during that little era. Um, she has she has the resume for it, and she's proven time and time and again she knows baseball. So let her cook. Let her cook. I like it. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but for people that have been listening to the show for a, for a while, some of those names that she acquired or she brought up Guys, those are people that we wanted. Like all of those names that you brought up, Isaac. Um, now, I think who is it? It was Josh Bell, Solaire. We really, really wanted Solaire. That was a guy we really wanted. He hit like 40 bombs last year. He doesn't hit for high average, but he's a good power guy. He would have been an amazing DH for the Padres this year. Um, and we like Josh Bell, and even though he struggled in San Diego, we still we still liked him as a player. So like he ends up getting traded there. Um Arias. Arias was linked to the Padres and we talked about it and we were like, you know, a, an average hitter like him would actually fit in this lineup really well. We saw that he had a tremendous season. Um, and then Pablo Lopez was the other guy and, and Pablo Lopez, now they traded him away, but it was a win-win deal. And we also were talking about Pablo Lopez for quite some time. So the players that, that she kind of went after on the Marlins fit like the mold that we liked as well. I, I just find that interesting. Cause it's like, Hey, we, those were the guys that like some of the guys we really wanted. Um, but yeah, I mean, she obviously knows ball extremely well. Uh, she's been in different organizations that are like, it's like pretty high, like status in a lot of those organizations. So, um, and I didn't even know that she had, had been like interviewed for the Padres role. I had no idea that was the case. So overall, man, I, I think it could, it could potentially be a, a great spot. Um, now, as we know, like if this role is truly available, we're going to find more and more out about who the candidates are. So it's definitely not just limited to her, but, Coming from a spot, I think for, we've all talked about this a little bit, but coming, we want to see a GM come in if they do bring one in. Coming from a spot where either it's an organization that's been able to build through the farm really well, like the Dodgers or the Orioles or the Rays, someone like that, or a team or a GM that's been able to have more success than what they're given in terms of a salary or talent, whatever that is. And she definitely checks that second box. Um, and she's also been in good organizations as well, not as a GM, but before that. So I think she, she checks both the boxes. Um, and I really wonder if that ends up happening, but do you guys have, uh, any other thoughts on maybe her in general, but also the GM role as well? <clears throat> yeah. If, if Preller isn't willing to give up that GM role or they're not going to move it away from him, I honestly, if I'm AJ Preller, I'm thinking, I don't want this role anymore. If I don't succeed this year, I'm going to get fired completely. You're going to be out of the organization. And I think if he doesn't micromanage Kim Ang, this could be a really good front office. This could, this could be a successful organization. If if he just gives the major league team to her, I mean, sure, there's still some minor decisions that can go through him, 
and Peter Seidler, but just let her build a team. Let her build, let, let her try having success with a bigger organization, with an organization that is actually spending money, has superstars on the roster. She just needs to acquire depth. The thing with the Padres is they went away from the recipe that worked in 2022. Did they have a few stars? Yeah, Manny Machado had an MVP candidate year. They traded for Juan Soto. Jake Cronenworth was solid. I mean, he he had another four-war season. Hugh Darvish had a great year. Snell had a great back half. Joe Musgrove, they were all really good. But the thing that worked for the Padres and got them to 89 wins and an NLCS appearance was depth. And what they did this year is said, screw depth. We'll just go get another star. Let's go get Xander Bogarts. And let's just not have any good bench pieces. Let's not have multiple multiple guys in the rotation. And look what happened. Everything went to, to hell. Everything went to shit. And they ended up being an 84-win team, which most of the season they were not on pace for that. Or no, not 84, sorry, 81 or 82, something like that. Most of the season they were not on pace for that. They just had a really hot last month. Damn near made it, but where was that throughout the season? And that's the thing. The team is capable of doing it. But the team that was capable of having that type of season is going to lose their Cy Young candidate. Now you're not going to have one of the best rotations in baseball probably. You be you would be lucky to have a top 10 rotation, I think. So um, I think that's where Preller comes in and we can say he needs to step away from that role in terms of not only – putting a better product on the field if Kim Ang could do it, but also saying I'm the president of baseball operations for an organization that is growing, that wants to win, that spends a lot of money, that has a great owner. I don't want to jeopardize this. Let me get a manager, give the reins to her. I'll keep scouting. I'll keep getting really good. Um, I'll keep building up the farm system for the future to pair up with Tatis and hopefully Juan Soto. And hopefully this Potters team could have a run for multiple years, but right now it's looking bleak because there's a lot of money allocated to guys that not only didn't have a good year last year, but are aging. Xander Bogarts is going to be what? 32 next year. Manny Machado is going to be 31 or 32. The guy that you really want is going to be 24 or 25 and you might not be able to extend them. So I, although I do think it's a great situation for Kim Ng to come into, um, she has less to work with, which she's shown with a smaller organization that she's able to work with. But AJ Preller ultimately needs to be able to say, I'm going to give the keys to you. And if that's not the case, then there's no point of getting someone else. 100%. And I think the only other thing that she, uh, she would need to address right away, and I think – would be better left out of the hands of AJ Preller is revamping the front office and the analytics department. As I mean, that is where the Padres really fell behind. And Bob Melvin has mentioned it more than a few times. And with her working through, you know, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the White Sox, the Marlins, they probably are up there in the analytics department. She could bring in people that she knows does a, will, a good job she has her connections throughout multiple organizations that people probably want to work for her. and you know who wouldn't want to come to san diego with the players that they have the front office that they have or not the front office but the owner that they have i mean he's willing to spend money the padres have a lot of talent on their team yeah we have a few holes but you throw in some money and some people in the analytics department and you fill in a few pieces here and there you guys have a really really strong team and Bob Melvin now can make more decisions based around what he had, like in Oakland, where, let's face it, he was manager of the year and one of the best managers in baseball with what he had. Three times, yeah, three-time manager of the year. So, like I said earlier, let her cook. I'm all for it. All right, guys. Well, I think that's kind of our piece on her potentially coming in as general manager, but the news came out this morning, so we wanted to talk about it. Um, we're going to be talking a lot more about the offseason now. I, I think the plan is probably to continue to keep doing our, our Sunday live streams um, and then doing a couple of segments throughout the week this offseason. So um, for this week, we got this video obviously out today, and we're going to do kind of an offseason, kind of like an overview, like our kind of blueprint of, hey, here's what the Padres need. 
they don't have much money to work with. This is what they have to figure out. Um, and then we're going to talk about Blake Snell as well coming up. So that's kind of the, the two next episodes we have um, coming up. But I think that's going to do it for today. So thank you all for listening. And uh, we'll be back talking Potters baseball very soon.